Oh, are we on the air? Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today we are going to look at two runouts by Siming Chen, uh, who is one of the great female players of our time. And her resume can be found in the description of this video. I think you should check it out. This is a casual kind of an exhibition match she had with Efren. I did analysis on this a few months back. If you guys want to check out the entire video, I'll leave a link in this video. The first lesson starts with the break. Now, Simming is a very small lady, but you can see how well she breaks the balls here. She doesn't put any excessive force in it. She does move her body weight forward, but it's more technique than it is power that gets this massive break for her. So she made a ball on the break, and we can see how she assesses this rack. She made a ball on the break, and you can tell that she didn't put a bunch of emphasis on leaving the cue ball in the center of the table, which seems to be a trend that's coming back again. Uh, doesn't matter where you leave the cue ball during the break if you don't make a ball. So your first priority is making a ball. So Simming makes the one ball at the other end of the table, and then... Uh, she's looking to get on the three ball here, and you can see she kind of undershot it. She is on that three ball, but certainly would have liked to uh, not have to worry about being past that 10 ball. She put a little high right on that ball to keep it from moving too close to the 10 as it came off the rail, but that also slowed down the cue ball as it came off the rail. As a result, she didn't get quite as far up the table as she would have liked. She's probably only three or four inches out of where she would want to be ideally. And because she could make the shot, doesn't really matter. But don't take those pocket hangers for granted, especially when you're going to be adding English or something to stall the ball. So she shoots that three ball with a draw shot, which was her intention all along. And like I said, things didn't change much, but she did almost hook herself behind that 10 ball. So now she's on the four, looking to get on this six. One of the things I want you to notice about her game that a lot of players really do not do often enough is she walks the table constantly. She's moving around the table. She's looking at all the different angles. She's finding shots and opportunities that she might not be able to see from one side of the table. She's not just looking to see if balls pass. She's looking to see true angles on these shots before she gets down and shoots them and true angles on the shots she's looking to get shape on as well. Now watch how she plays this 7 to the 8. She just kind of rolls it up, gets position on the 8, doesn't try to do anything fancy to get closer. And I know some of you are thinking, well, this is the only shot she had. Well, that's just not the case. There's a number of things she could have done to try to get closer to that eight ball, uh, but there was no reason to do it. If you have shape, keep your shape, even if you might have a tough shot down the rail or that shot that you hate shooting or whatever the case is. Uh, now, both of those shots were layups for her, but at the same time, if you have shape, take that shape and work with it. The next rack we're gonna look at starts out with a safety battle and ends up with a really nice run out. So let's take a look at that. The situation is this, Efren breaks. He has a nice break here, spreads the balls out. You can notice that Efren is not obsessed with stopping the cue ball in the center of the table either. Uh, he's trying to make a ball. He does make a ball, uh, does leave himself hooked and he is going to push out here. So Simming is going to have to respond. The thing you need to pay most attention to is the two balls under the crosshairs. That is the most important situation on the table. You can't run out without breaking those balls up. So you're either going to have to break them up and play a safety, which is not a bad idea, or make a shot that breaks them up. In the meantime, Ephraim plays a nice safety, puts Simming behind the 10 ball. Uh, she can probably see the one ball, actually. 
I think she's going to shoot on the one and play safety right back at him. But I want you to watch just how she goes about playing this safety here. Watch where she sends the cue ball. She is without doubt aiming for that cluster. Both of them would like to break up the cluster and leave their opponent hooked at the same time. Because ball in hand at this point, unless you are breaking up the cluster on one of your shots during your run or prior to your run, ball in hand does not help you get out here. Efren again aims for the cluster. Not just to touch the cluster, but if you could move that ball just two or three inches, you would get it to a point where it can be uh, made because it's just tied up in a way that it doesn't go anywhere at all right now. So without question, as one of the greatest female players on the planet, we know that Simming has an understanding of the diamond system. But she keys up for this shot in a way that I know she's going to scratch. Efren knows she's going to scratch. But she doesn't know she's going to scratch. You cannot get tunnel vision when you're shooting these kick shots. If you understand the diamond system, you realize that she's shooting through diamond number five at spot number five, which is going to lead directly to the corner pocket and will miss the one ball by maybe six or eight inches. So when you have these situations and you're kicking, don't let your other skills go out the window. Don't get tunnel vision on these kick shots. There's a number of things she could have done differently here. And in a more important event, she might have given it more thought. But that was clearly a scratch shot. If you didn't learn anything else from this video, this next shot is one thing I would like you to pick up. Efren has ball in hand. Even at this advanced age, he's one of the best players in the world. And what does he do with his ball in hand? He plays a safety. If you're not going to run out, play a safety in that situation. Notice, once again, he targeted that cluster at the other end. He wanted to leave her hooked and break up the cluster so he didn't have to do it off of another ball. You don't have to shoot just because you have a shot. Keep that in mind. Now, Simming ran and got her jump cue, but before we watch her shoot this jump shot, I want to show you something that happened earlier. When we go back to the second game, Efren plays this amazing safety here. I mean, this is classic Efren Reyes. He hits this ball full with just enough speed to get it across the table and behind this nine ball, probably the best shot of the entire match. Simming takes her invisible jump cue and comes over and looks to line up the shot, realizes that her cue is not at this end of the arena. So she has to either go borrow one or fetch her cue from her practice table, whatever the case was. She did not have her equipment with her. So what does she do? She sprints down, grabs her cue, sprints back, jacks up her pants, and now has to shoot a shot. She might be one of the best women in the world with a jump cue. And she's now playing with an elevated heart rate. So the lesson here is keep your tools with you. Know where they are whether it's the jump cue, the bridge, your break cue, make sure you have them nearby. We're back and Simming shoots this amazing jump shot. Told you she was good with the jump cue. If you don't have a jump shot in your game and you're playing nine ball or 10 ball, you need to start developing a jump shot right away. At the minimum, you need to be able to hit balls when you are blocked by other balls. You may not be making them the way you just saw, but at least be able to make contact with that ball. So Simming has an opportunity here to run out as long as she manages to break up the cluster. She has an opportunity to break it up because she has a number of shots that will get her on that cluster. It's kind of semi-broken up now because Efren did manage to hit it earlier. So what she's going to do is take a number of different shots that are going to give her an opportunity to break the cluster. She's constantly looking at it. That last shot from the two to the three was an opportunity to break up that cluster. 
If she doesn't get it on this shot, she's going to give herself another opportunity. So if you don't have a chance to break up the cluster, but you do have a chance to get to it later in the rack without losing the game, you can go ahead and do it. The difference in her situation and Efren's situation is she chose to be more aggressive, go after these balls after she made that one ball shot. She's behind in the match. She could play more aggressively and know that she's going to have three opportunities to break up these balls. So it's clearly her confidence at this point that she's going to get it either off the three, off the four, or off the five uh, that is causing her to go ahead after these balls. The other thing to keep in mind is if she doesn't manage to break them up, she can always play safety at some other point. But as you can see, she does, she does manage to hit them. They get into a bad situation for her in that they create a combination shot, and players at this level even uh, don't want to shoot combination shots, but she's not going to have any choices, and she'll know what to do with it anyway. So she's going to play this in a way that gives her easy position on that seven ball, just going up and back, and now she'll shoot a nice combination shot. You put a little follow on this, you know where the seven ball is going after it makes the eight. It's going to go to the short rail. So all you need to do is get your cue ball in a position where you know you have a shot on a ball that's sitting in front of the short rail. So that's exactly what she does. She shoots a little follow, comes in right behind that seven ball, taps it a little bit closer to the pocket, and she is on the money ball. I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. We're very close to 25,000 subscribers at this point. So if you haven't subscribed yet, this would be a great time to do it. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Hit me in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the commentary. And once again, thanks for watching.